all my algebra homework. Nuts to school. I'd like to quit. What you kicking for? She only kept you an hour this time. Well, who wants to spend an hour just to find out what X equals? Well, you found out, didn't you? So what? I'm sick of school. I want to be practical. I want to work. We're crying out loud. Don't you get enough work in school? Oh, rats, not that kind of work. I mean real work. Why, I can learn more about airplanes and motors in the garage than I can in school. I tell you, that's Ray. Hi, Hi Ray. Hi, Uncle Ray. Hi, Uncle Ray. Hi there, gang. Long time Bus no see, Ray. Yeah, busy as ever? Well, said you'd be in today. Hey, watch out there, Dr. Jack. You don't blow up the shop. Come on over here. I want to talk business. Business? Oh, trouble with the plane? No, it's about school. I want to quit and get a job. I thought you wanted to be an aviator. Well, that's just it. If you could get me a job around the airport, I'd be learning all the right things. Without spending hours and hours at algebra and science and all that junk, I'd be getting in a lot of good groundwork. Oh, and... wait a minute. You need more than that. Groundwork's all well and good, but you get the biggest part of that in school. It's the early training and preparation that counts. If you don't have things all figured out right in the first place, you'll never make a good pilot. Many's a tough spot I've been in when I've had a chance to use the things I learned in school. And just lately, too. You mean on the coast, Ron? Well, on the last trip, we had a pretty bad storm. Did anything happen? No, but something could have happened. What? Tell us all about that trip, Ray. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. That's too big an order. Oh, oh no, come on. Be good yeah. stuff. What was the first thing you did, Ray? Well, it started out just like any other trip. I went to the airport an hour early to visit the operation room. I looked over the weather conditions, planning my route ahead of the trip. That's where your geography came in handy, huh? You bet. And while I'm gathering this information and filling out my flight plan, the ship's being thoroughly worked over and inspected by a staff of trained mechanics. You can see there, Monk, how the training in mechanical classes now is a big help in aviation ground school later on. I report to the dispatcher and test the radio. Plane number 101 on the ramp. On day frequency, go ahead. 101 on ramp, test OK. Plane number 101 to WBEK. What's the wind? Go ahead. WBEK to 101, wind south four, use runway number three. OK, WBEK. Before we take off, Norton, my co-pilot, tests the motors while I take a look at the instruments and controls. Everything's clear and away we go. Norton and I are busy with the flight log and flight observation report. We give all our information to ground stations by radio, including our height, position, temperatures, wind speed, and direction. How can a plane in the air tell how fast the wind's going? I'm afraid I can't explain that without going into higher mathematics. When you fellows get into trigonometry and calculus and other advanced courses, You'll find that things like that'll be easy. Easy? Sure. Because you'll be learning how to think. You can imagine how fast a fellow has to figure when he's 10,000 feet up in a storm with a 200 mile an hour plane on his hands. The pilot has to know what to do and when to do it. That's the spot I was in on one trip. My radio report showed a low seating. That means poor visibility. We'll have to go in on the radio beam. What's a radio beam? 
That's a set of signals sent out by radio beam stations along our route to keep us on course. What kind of signals? Well, that depends. When I'm on my direct route, I hear a long dash like this in my earphone. If I go to the left of my course, I hear a series of dot dashes like this. If I go to the right, I hear a series of dash dots. In either case, I know I'm not headed straight for the airport. So I change my course until I hear the long dash again. And that long dash is going to lead us to a perfect landing. I check my instruments. The artificial horizon shows we're flying on even keel. The altimeter registers 1,200 feet. The airspeed indicator shows we're going just a little over 100 miles an hour and headed right at the beam station. Now the signal fades. I'm right over the beam station in what's called the cone of silence. But in a second, I'm on the opposite leg of the beam and hear the long dash again. I know I'm just past the field. I fly out along the beam, away from the field, for four minutes. Now I turn. I'm still at 1,200 feet. And I know I'm four minutes away from the field, flying at 100 miles an hour. So my nose are down. In four minutes, losing 300 feet a minute, we should be just over the end of the runway. Down we go. A thousand feet. 900, 800 feet, 700 feet, there's a runway. Now we're settling fast, 300 feet, 100 feet. She's down, and there we are. Must take a lot of studying to be a pilot. You better takes a lot of studying and years of intensive schooling. Most pilots come from Army and Navy flying schools, and they have to have at least two years of college to get in there. That's where high school work helps out. You said it. The future pilot has to know the theory of flying on paper before he ever gets a ship. And he has a thousand hours flying experience before he can even be a co-pilot. Gee. A thousand hours. Looks like everybody connected with aviation or any other business or profession needs to go to school plenty. That's right, Jack. As a doctor, you'll have some mighty important work to do. The science of medicine is young. It has new men and new ideas, but it needs more. With the proper training, you'll be sitting on top of the world someday. And that's true of every one of you. Boy, when I think what a chance you fellows have to do things, why, there's no limit for you. You'll just get on the job of learning how to think. Gosh, to think that someday you fellows will be telling the world what kind of food to eat, and what clothes to wear. And how to make cars better. Right, and all the other things that change with time and progress. Now just remember this, fellows. If you develop your minds now while you're young, you'll be the ones to design the world of tomorrow. <laughs>